Want to give a quick shout out to all my patrons. Thank you so much for the continued support. Hey everybody, this is Matt from Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews, here to give you a complete breakdown of one of my favorite fantasy series of all time, The First Law by Joe Abercrombie. Um, this video is mainly intended for people that have not read these books yet, that are holding out, that might be a little nervous about it. Let's break it down without any spoilers and talk about it and try to get you a little bit hyped up on this incredible, incredible series. So. Uh, what is The First Law? This is a 10-book series that's broken down into two trilogies that bookend it. So you've got three, and then you've got three standalones, a short story collection, and then a final three trilogy to end out this whole series. It spans a great length of time. Um, the first book is The Blade Itself. Um, this is the story of a few different people who have uh, point of views that come and get weaved together, uh, but they're also their own individual stories that happen throughout. Um, the first POV is Logan Nine Fingers. Uh, this is an infamous barbarian who's finally run out of luck, um, and he's left for dead when this book starts out. Um, every now and then he involuntarily turns into this split personality where he's the bloody nine. Um, and he's like this seemingly unstoppable killing force um, who can't really differentiate between friend and foe. Um, then another point of view, you have Giselle Dan Luthar. Um, he's this dashing officer um, that's selfish and kind of a jerk. Um, and he wants to become a dueling champion and find his way in the world, um, even though he's uh, quite lazy and really self-absorbed. Um, then you also have Inquisitor Glockta. This is one of my favorite characters of all time. Um, maybe like my number two favorite of all time behind Fitz from uh, Realm of the Outerlings. He's this evil torturer. Um, he's a cripple who used to be the hero of the Union, um, but now he's been given this new job to cut out treason from the country by like any means possible, and he will take them. Um, then finally, you have Baez. Uh, he's this wizard with a bad temper, and you're really not sure, um, especially in this first book, if he's like the world's greatest fraud or like the world's greatest wizard of all time. But his storyline really is the one that connects the rest of these characters together um, and, and ties them into what's going on with, with the rest of the story. Um, so this story follows the, the fortunes and misfortunes of bad people who are trying to do the right thing um, and good people who have to do bad things uh, and like stupid people who have to do stupid things and like a lot of combinations of all of the things that I just said. This is like a, a very bloody and violent fantasy with very multidimensional characters, uh, laugh out loud humor, and poignant thoughts that ring true in today's society. In short, if, if I could break this down into like as few words as possible, imagine like Lord of the Rings like adventure, but written by Quentin Tarantino um, is, is a decent way to look at this. Um, so let's talk about the pros and cons of the First Lost series as a whole. So the number one pro that everybody will tell you is the character writing. Uh, Joe Abercrombie writes some of the best characters that exist in all of fantasy. It, it, top to bottom, they're wonderful. Now, I don't like them all. You're not supposed to like them all because this is a rather dark story. But they're, they're incredible. And he brings them to life in such an amazing way. They're so unique from one another. They feel like real, like living, breathing people. And it, it's just incredible the way he's able to write these people. And especially so because he writes these series and these books. Um, now, certainly the trilogy is connected. But then you have these other books that aren't really connected with each other. Um, there's some loose threads. And then another trilogy, which takes place la way later. But he's able to inter like get rid of these, like, these dearly loved characters and bring in some new ones. And they're just as good, if not better, than the ones that he's introduced before. It's incredible. Um, he's also extremely well known for writing extremely good twists. Now, I don't want to tell you when these twists happen or what happens, you know, and I don't think it's a, it's a spoiler to say that there's twists in this story because most fantasy has twists in them. That's one of the hallmarks of fantasy, but they're very well done and they're done so well in that you kind of maybe should have seen them coming, but you don't. And they twist the story up on itself and they make you want to finish up and go reread the story because of the new appreciation that you'll have um, for this new like way of thinking about these books. Um, now, the writing quality. Uh, Joe Abercrombie is a master, master writer. And, you know, I, I like to differentiate writing quality from really good authors themselves because I find somebody like Brandon Sanderson, who I'm sure you all know, um, not to be like the highest writing quality author. Now, he's incredible. I love him. He writes some of the greatest fantasy stories that have ever been told. But is he? A, does he write really high quality writing? No. Um, Abercrombie does. Abercrombie is, you know, one of the titans of, of fantasy, 
And it's not just like the way that he writes prose, but the way that he ties in these stories um, with this deeper level of thinking, it's very good. Um, now, another really positive thing about this story is that it somehow combines a really dark story and a really funny story at the same time. Now, it's certainly more dark than funny, but you're going to, unless you just don't have a sense of humor or your just sense of humor totally conflicts with the way this is, but it's very funny. And it does have a darker humor to it. It's not going to be like these moments that are like slapsticky moments, although there's some. Uh, but it's like, it's really dark comedy and it fits in really well with this darker story. Um, the action sequences. I believe that Abercrombie is the second best battle writer all in fantasy. I think that, um, you know, John Gwen's a little bit better. But Abercrombie's amazing. He writes these battle sequences and he does these moments in them that are so vivid, like you'll never forget these sequences. And he writes these incredible like moments. Uh, in one of the books, he writes this large sequence over many pages following a random soldier in this battle who's, you know, you, you feel like you're going along this war with him. He gets killed. The POV switches to the person that kills him. He goes, he gets killed, it switches. It does this a bunch of times. It's amazing. I've never read anything like it before. Just super incredible. Um, this also is very quotable. Um, you're going to hear some quotes here that I will not ruin now. But if you've been around the fantasy scene at all, you're, these are going to pop up and you'll be like, oh, that's where this is from. Uh, you're going to want to use them in real life. I mean, they're, they're very, very quotable and awesome. Uh, this is also a completed story. Uh, not a lot of fantasy. I mean, a lot, but uh, uh, fantasy is known for having uncompleted stories or stories that uh, maybe never will get completed because you have authors like George R. R. Martin and Patrick Rothfuss who just for whatever reason can't get that next book out. Uh, this is done. Uh, now he may add on to the story, but you can consider this whole sequence kind of finished. If he does more, it'll be like a kind of new thing within the universe. Um, and you can read these on, on your own and feel like it's completed. Um, and then finally, and kind of one of the most important things is the audiobook quality. The audiobook quality is unmatched in my opinion. The narrator is perfect and brings to life the story in a way that you will not get out of the text. Now, I fully believe that in almost all circumstances, it's better to read a book than to listen to a book. Now, I do listen because I drive and I, and I like to read stories and I like to consume stories in any format. And I can't physically read a book while I'm driving, so I listen. But this gets enhanced by listening to the audiobook. And if you have a choice, if you're not sure whether you would like audio, give this one a shot. Um, if you're not a member of Audible, um, then just go to the link below um, or audibletrial.com slash Matt, and you can get that free trial and get me a little kickback along the way. Um, or if you already have Audible, then pick this one up. Uh, now let's talk about the cons. There's not a lot, but let's talk about them because they do exist. Um, the, one of the cons is that this is a simple story. Uh, this is not terribly complex. And, you know, it, it feels very straightforward, kind of point A to point B. You're not going to be like looking up theories and going through the, you know, the, the lore of the world here. Um, it's just not that kind of story. And if you're looking for that, then look elsewhere. Um, this is also a rather simple world. Now, when you look at the map of this world, um, they're unofficial maps because Abercrombie doesn't really believe in maps. But... Most of the conflict happens in very isolated locations. You know, you're not going to get wrapped up in this, you know, global conflict. Um, a lot happens in a, in a few set locations, and it just doesn't have that epic feel to the story that a lot of other fantasy has. Um, this is also rather slow, especially the first book. The first book takes a while to really set the stage before things start firing off. Um, but, you know, you're not going to get, you know, action-packed, right out of the gate here. It's got a slow burn. It does burn, but it takes a little while to get there. And then finally, although I think this is a pro, a lot of people may not, but this is a really grim, dark story. There's a lot of dark, evil people in this book. A lot of people that do irredeemable type things that are going to make you want to root against them. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it's very dark. It's kind of probably the most famous grim, dark book. Now the, the definition of grim, dark is, uh, very contentious. I think Joe Abercrombie not, might not even label his books at Grimdark, but I think most people would. Um, but yeah, just expect a very dark book. Um, so 
Let us now talk about some reading tips. Now, I know this sounds silly to say reading tips uh, because it sounds super complicated, but I do have some things that you should know before you get into this. One is, um, even though this isn't super complicated, um, especially if you're listening to Audible, I can kind of get lost over time. And, you know, the, the wiki here is, is very good. Um, when you finish a chapter, if you, or if you get to a new chapter, this new POV, and you're like, where was this character? Hop online, the wiki's awesome. Just read like the chapter summary of that character before that scene, it'll refresh you. Not gonna spoil anything, very well done. Um, I also highly recommend that you read these in publication order. Now, this is almost always what you should do. Um, but, you know, I've heard some people saying like, can I skip the standalones? Uh, can, I, can I skip this, skip that? Don't do it, just read them all. Straight order, don't mess around. Um, I've heard some, some crazy people that have like read the final trilogy and then read the first one. And while you might get some interesting perspectives from doing it that way, certainly not what I would recommend. Um, now I mentioned this earlier, um, but definitely tip, listen to this in audiobook. Or if you really like to read, then do both. Do the immersive reading thing where you listen to audio while you're reading, that would be awesome. Uh, probably the best way to go about this. And finally, um, there are no maps in these books, um, but they do, it will capture your imagination a little bit more if you do look up the unofficial maps. So just uh, Google First Law Map, um, there's several different versions of them. They all look kind of the same, but yeah, you know, look it up and, and, and gaze it in, read a few chapters and then look at it. It'll help you feel like there's a bigger world and more, more interesting here. Um, so now let's talk about the, the four different types of books here um, and kind of break them down a little bit. So first you have the First Law Trilogy. This is by far the most popular. And this is a, a beginning, middle, and end of the story. And you don't have to read everything else. It certainly fills things out more. But you have this trilogy that is uh, The Blade itself. It's Before They Are Hanged and The Last Argument of Kings. The Last Argument of Kings being one of my favorite books that I've ever read in my entire life. Um, then you have three standalones. And these standalones are important to read because they really flesh out some characters that you're going to meet in the final trilogy. But they all are very standalone stories. First, you have Best Served Cold. Um, this is a very classic revenge tale. It's the most different, I think, from all the rest of the books um, because it follows like almost all, I think it's almost all, maybe all, one point of view. And it's not very complicated. It's just, you know, in the first chapter, a bad thing happens and the person who has something bad happen to them uh, pledges revenge among, um, uh, against a bunch of people, and you kind of know that they're all going to get picked off one by one, and you're going to have a fun time along the way. Um, then you have the heroes. This is a very interesting tale um, that follows a three-day battle. Um, so the whole book is about this battle. Um, there's not a lot of setup. There is some, but then the battle's off, and you're just going to be reading about every single part of this and get immersed into a wonderful, you know, his, it almost feels like a historical book, but with a lot of like vivid imagination built into it. And it, it's extremely well done. Um, then you have Red Country. Uh, Red Country is like a fantasy Western book. It's very interesting. Um, and, and you get kind of some flashbacks to some other characters that you've seen before. Um, and again, good stuff. Then you have a short story selection. Um, this is called Sharp Ends. I think there's 13 different short stories here. Uh, some are great, some are okay, some are bad, um, but they all kind of flesh out this world a little bit more. Then finally, you have the Age of Madness trilogy. Uh, this is a trilogy, three book series, um, that's A Little Hatred, The Trouble with Peace, and The Wisdom of Crowds. This follows um, the basically the next generation of people from the first trilogy and it kind of located in the same place, but I can't ruin anything. I wish I could, but yeah, just a new story. Okay, so now let us talk about these books and let's rank them. Uh, my personal taste on these 10 books and where I'd where I put them. So the first category that I will have, and there's only one book in it, and this is the okay books. Um, and it's obviously number 10, and this is Sharp Ends, the short story collection. Yeah, I'm just not a big short story guy. And I don't think you're going to find anybody that thinks that this is anything other than the worst book of this bunch. And it's the only one that you can skip. I don't suggest you do. It's fun to read, especially right before you read Age of Madness. There are some fun tie-ins. Uh, but yeah, it's okay. Uh, then you have the ones that I'd say are good. Um, and number nine is Best Serve Cold. This is the revenge story. It's just too basic for me to rank that much higher. I did like it. I had a 
fun time, uh, but it wasn't it wasn't amazing. And you know, you know, you were you have this promise at the beginning of the book of what's going to happen, and then it happens. So yeah, just not what I would expect out of a book that's really known for a lot of twists and throwing you around and having you guess and and yeah, it's just very straightforward. Um, then at number eight, I have the heroes. This is the other uh, one of the other standalones. It was hard for me to connect with this one um, when I was listening on an audiobook. Now, I love the audiobook narrator, but this, there's so much complexity to what's happening. I would have really, I think, liked to have like a map in front of me where I could really just track things and plot them out. I'm that kind of reader, and I can't do that while I'm driving around. So, you know, if there's one book that would benefit by reading the physical version and the audio at the same time, uh, more than anything, it is The Heroes. Um, now, these are the books that I would consider very good. Number seven, I have Red Country. This is the last of the standalones. And and yeah, it's it's really good. And I like Westerns. I've always been a Western guy. And I do, it, there's this weird crossover between fantasy fans and Western fans. I don't know why there is this weird crossover between the two genres. Um, but if, you're, if you've never read a Western and you're really into fantasy, there's a chance that you might like Western books because it, it just appeals to the same part of the brain for some reason. Uh, but yeah, really fun. Uh, the number six is The Blade Itself. This is the first book, and it's unfortunate that the first book is not better, so it can hook more people, because I think a lot of people read that first book and go, yeah, you know, it's good, not for me. Um, but you got to keep going to really get to the incredible books, which are the next five. Uh, so number five is Before They Are Hanged. This is in the first Law trilogy. This is the next book in the series, number two. And... The reason that I can't rank this one higher is because what happens at the very end of this book? It's a, it's very much the definition of a middle book syndrome, and it kind of takes this classic fantasy trope that I can't say because I don't want to ruin anything, but flips it on itself. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, come and join the Discord channel um, down below, and I'll talk to you about it all day. Uh, I've, I've got this really fun discord with lots of hundreds of people in it. I would love to have you and talk about fancy books with me, but, but yeah, something happened in there that I'm not a fan of and it kind of tainted me a little bit on the book, but I still loved it. Uh, number four is a little hatred. This is in the age of madness series. And I, this is, this is the first book in the series. And I was just enraptured by this story. I, I couldn't believe that the author was able to pick up and go into this next book in a new trilogy and kind of abandon almost all of the characters from the first one and just totally suck me in in a much better way than the first trilogy did. And the first trilogy is one of my favorite trilogies of all time. So to start off, it was such a bang here, was just wonderful. Um, then number three is The Trouble with Peace. Um, this is the second book in the Age of Madness trilogy. And this one didn't suffer from any sort of middle book syndrome at all. This had a very solid beginning, middle, and end. Um, it didn't finish the story out, clearly. There's another book here, but it can be read and feel like you're you're complete. It took things in a wonderful direction. A This take on... Oh, man, I wish I could spoil things, but I'm committed to not spoiling. But the main kind of theme of the story and the thing that it's doing in it, um, I thought it really advanced that story in a wonderful way. Um, number two is The Wisdom of Crowds. Uh, this is the final book of the Age of Madness trilogy. And it just end, it takes everything from that first series and it ends it in such an amazing, perfectly Joe Abercrombie way. These are dark books. It's got a dark ending. I love that stuff. I love to not be able to guess what's going to happen. I love to not be totally, you know, personally satisfied with everything that happens. Uh, it doesn't have this nice tidy knot that gets, you know, tied on here. Um, it's just a wonderful ending. And first is the final book in the initial trilogy, The Last Argument of Kings. This is the perfect ending that I could ever dream up. Uh, it's just, a, it's a perfect book from beginning beginning to end. Uh, you know, it, it has one of the greatest twists that I will ever read about, ever. It's got multiple of them, but one of them is just mind boggling to me. To this day, I'll never forget the feelings that it evoked in me. Um, and, and yeah, it's just wonderful. So, uh, that's all of the books ranked and that is going to do it for this video. So I hope if you've never read the series that I've at least convinced you to give this a shot, give it a shot in audible. You're not going to regret it. I hope you enjoy it. If you want to chat about this, uh, check down in the comments, let's talk about it or join the discord and we can go into a lot more detail. So thank you so much for watching this video and as always happy reading to you.
Thanks again to my patrons with a special shout out to my Ascendant tier patrons, Anna, Ben, Brian, CJ, Da Newt, Darren, Jamie, Maria, Michael Sugarman, My Book is Lit, Nev's Book Channel, Romeo Mike, Ron Reich, Russell, Ryan L, and Sky.